The developing world is hit with a dual problem, where few have the resources to afford vehicles, and the terrible physical infrastructure quickly destroying most vehicles that are there. There are also huge issues with supply chain, which limit access to fuel and power. We have found that our current model in the developed world is also unsustainable and causing massive environmental issues. We do not need the developing world to catch up with the developed. We need to come up with better ways to move people and goods and produce energy in ways that take advantage of the technology currently available and create new solutions to these complex problems. My entry for the 2015 Hackaday Prize is a solar-powered utility vehicle, or SUV for short. I designed the vehicle for the work that I do in South Sudan. I needed a mobile workshop that would allow me to move from place to place and power tools when I got there. While I designed it for the specific purpose, I believe as a platform it could be useful in many other ways. Many of the areas in South Sudan where I live lack any sort of municipal power. In many rural areas there's no source of power at all. Fuel is only available in limited areas and even then there are often shortages. Currently the town I live in has been out of fuel for almost a month. Solar photovoltaics have now become affordable enough to be a cost-effective solution to the power issues in the developing world. The SUV is a mobile platform that works not only as a vehicle, but also as a mobile power plant, capable of supplying useful amounts of energy for people working off the grid. This means people doing mobile medical outreach clinics could bring their machines or a small fridge for vaccines out to where people are. It also means people can set up mobile storefronts where they can have businesses charging cell phones and rechargeable lights. Then at the end of the day, they can drive their shop home and power their houses. There is also a great opportunity for mobile repair or fabrication businesses to drive to wherever they need to work and then have the power to do their work on site. At night, the power can be used with a projector to play films or music. There are a multitude of opportunities for a mobile power station that can replace expensive, loud, and polluting generators. The vehicle itself is articulating and rotates at the central point. This gives it a tremendous amount of suspension travel without stressing the body. The hinge uses bearings so that the stress is transferred directly to the frame. There are also coil over shock suspensions for each wheel. These shocks, like many of the components for this project, are spare parts for Indian or Chinese motorcycles, which are popular throughout much of the developing world. Their mass production means that spare parts are readily available and very inexpensive. The vehicle has a dumping bed, which does double duty as passenger seating. There is also an ATV winch in the front, in case you get into any trouble. The vehicle is powered by four separate 24-volt DC permanent magnet motors. This means that the vehicle has full-time four-wheel drive, without the need of a differential. Turning is done by varying the power to each motor. This has been one of the most difficult elements of the project. The system works by reading the joystick on a Wii nunchuck. This is the set point for a PID control loop. The input comes by reading a sensor that reads the degree of rotation at the hinge point. An Arduino takes these parameters and controls the turn output of two dimension engineering Sabertooth motor controllers. These have been great controllers, and I've had a great experience working with dimension engineering. I had a problem with one of the controllers, and they sent me a new one for free to Australia so that somebody could carry it out in their check bag. Sourcing parts and finding replacement parts has been a huge challenge here in South Sudan. I've gone through a number of different sensors to get something to work as an angular position sensor. Currently, I'm using a modified servo motor for position feedback, which is not ideal, but it's the only thing that I had available at the time. The power for the motors come from two 200 amp hour tubular gel lead acid batteries. These are charged by four 95 watt solar panels, which are controlled by a 20 amp MPPT charge controller. With a system like this, there is an inherent danger, and so a number of safety systems have been implemented. All the lines to the battery are fused and can be shut off from the driver's seat. Shutoffs control the front motor, rear motors, accessories, and welding negative. The motor controllers are current limited, and I have done current and temperature monitoring. Motor drive control from the Arduino to the motor control is done by packet serial with a checksum so it can't be corrupted. There's also a timeout limit so the vehicle stops if communication between the Arduino and Sabertooth is interrupted. The key switch also acts as an emergency stop and when shut off pulls the S2 signal on the Sabertooth to ground, which stops the vehicle. For me, the greatest part of this vehicle is the utility it offers as a mobile workshop. I added a bus bar to the front to power accessories. I've modified an old Makita battery to act as a plug so that I can run all my Makita tools directly off the battery. I also wound a massive toroidal inductor to act as an arc stabilizer so that I can weld with the batteries.
variable power supply, which can run my soldering iron for electrical work. Of course, no vehicle would be complete without an entertainment system. So for this system, I repurposed an old Android phone and connected it with a buck converter. I added an amplifier and speakers. It is all housed in an old halogen work light fixture. I also added headlights by modifying some old LED downlights. It is the flexibility to adapt to a number of tasks that I think make this vehicle really useful, and I hope part of the solution for helping people in the developing world. Of course, a project like this will probably never be finished, as I will continue to upgrade it and make changes. It should get quite a good test, as next week I will be loading it up on the back of a truck and taking it to the capital city, Juba. There I will be loading it onto an old Russian Antonov cargo plane, which will fly up to a refugee camp on the border of Sudan and South Sudan. I'll be there a month. I've been given an old shipping container by a friend up there, and I'm going to use the SUV to cut and weld doors and windows into the container and turn it into a house for my family. The SUV will be my only power source for the project. I will then be traveling back to Australia, where my wife and I are expecting our first child. I hope to be able to complete the long task of creating step-by-step -step construction plans during that time. I would like to thank Hackaday for creating this contest and helping me stay motivated on this project. I would also like to thank the Hackaday community for their support and suggestions. I've put a lot of time and energy into this project. It has been a source of great joy and also incredible frustration. I really hope that it will be a useful tool and inspires others to think differently about the problems that we face.